G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, Brendan and Jeremy, they have been investigating the claim that the distance between the longitude lines decrease the further you go south from the equator. I just don't yep. understand. I think this one worries people because... It does. It actually, there's a possibility to falsify one model or the other here if you uh, assume that the sun is like a permanent object in a fixed position, not something weird or magical is, is going on. Well, I am really surprised that Brendan has gone down this path. I mean, his flatty sense usually goes off, but somehow he's full on investigating the decreasing distance between the longitude lines. Um, but I, like I said, this has been brought up to me multiple times and I still haven't seen any real world observations of what they're, they're saying happens. But the way this is going to turn out, we will see you guys tearing up your looks flat to me membership cards, and then you'll be able to become water humpers. Hello? Legal? Oh, I can't say that. Okay then. Well now guys, at least now you can be globies like normal people. I just don't yep. understand. You can point to time and date all you want. That is literally based on their model. The claim that time and date is built on a globe model is correct, Brendan. It is using the globe model, but it's not a circular reference that you are trying to imply. The model is built on reality. So what we see is a model being able to make predictions that turn out to be correct every single time. I mean, moonrise times, always spot on. Sunset times, any given location, always spot on. I just don't yep. understand. Oh, and then how often have flatties used Google Maps to tell us just how far that laser beam bent over the horizon? Or how far away that we saw a little bit too far? Flatties get to use Google Maps or GPS data or time and date data whenever it suits them. No questions asked. And we Globies, we all just smile deep down inside when we see that. We know, but we let it slide. I just don't yep. understand. And Google Maps, the distance calculations are based on the globe model as and is always correct. We know that. I'm sure you do too. I just don't yep. understand. Okay, so here's the setup for today's video. I want to help you, Brandon. Yes, I really do. So here's what I want to show you. Now, given that we all trust Google Maps for distances, then here we go. I want to find a series of similar places that are all long in distance, like a mile or more, that are all straight, that are flat, that are well-defined for their positions and their angles. You know, very accurately surveyed and published and all that. Well, how about airport runways? They are everywhere, and they are very accurate, as planes have to find them and land on them. I just don't yep. understand. So I had a quick Google and I found a database online, and the link is in the description as always. It has over 41,000 entries. So, okay, time to prune that back a little bit. Don't want all of that. The first thing I limited was the length, to a mile or more. Then I wanted only runways that had GPS location set, and then I set the angle to 90 degrees, plus or minus 10, so from 80 to 100 degrees. That gave me about 1,300 runways. So that gave me the runways I wanted, basically east-west. The database had locations for both ends of the runway as well, and that was really lucky. The database also had the length in feet for the runway. So by subtracting the longitude at one end from the longitude at the other, gave me how long the runway is in degrees. Next, I calculated the kilometers per degree ratio. Now, we all know that at the equator, it's 69 nautical miles per degree, or 111 kilometers per degree. So when I plotted the latitude of the runways on the x-axis, the independent variable, and on the y-axis, the kilometer to degree ratio, the dependent variable, what do you think I get? Hold on to your seats, boys and girls. Isn't that interesting, boys and girls? 
I just don't yep. understand. So then to verify the method and perhaps rub salt into Flatty's wounds, yes, definitely to do that, I rotated the whole thing by 90 degrees and did it all again. This time picking runways with angles between 170 and 190 degrees, so basically north-south runways. And I got about 500 of those. This time using the kilometres per degree data and plotting it against the latitude, I got a nice straight line. Looks flat to me. You know, I always wanted to be able to say that and mean it. I just don't yep. understand. Well, this is because the distance between latitude lines is always the same. I just don't yep. understand. Well, Wolfie loves this particular airport at Honolulu. Now the runway is at 79 degrees, but when you add the 11 degrees of magnetic declination, it's spot on 90. So he loves to go there on the equinox and watch the sun rise or set straight down the middle of I just don't yep. understand. But I wanted to go to Ushuaia. The airport has two runways, one east-west and the other north-south, and it's way down south. So here's the Google map view of this very southerly airport. Now I've put the lat lons on each end of the runway, and they are correct. Now if you drove there, you have, I'm assuming you would have no doubt that the GPS would read exactly those coordinates. I also added the length of the runway. And then the difference in degrees along the runway. So I subtracted the latitudes for the north-south runway and I've subtracted the longitudes for the east-west runway. So Brendan and Jeremy, please note that even though the east-west runway is 1.7 times longer than the north-south runway, when you measure it the distance in kilometers along the ground, when you measure the degrees of difference, it's 3.1 times longer. So how are you going to explain that? I just don't yep. understand. So you don't, you can't point to your model and say, well, this is how it works on our model. Therefore our model is correct. You, you have to give us world world empirical data in my opinion, but we should go out. Yeah. They're saying even, they're saying even that's not going to do it though. Even if we get the real world data, it's too many variables and we don't know what this, you know, I, I don't know. Who's saying that flat earthers? Flat, I mean, yeah, flat earthers are trying. I heard somebody spit percentage, spit almost verbatim, which what what the shit I tried to use to to dismiss this. You know what I mean? We don't know how the sky works. You don't know this. Like everything, all these flat earthers are saying to me, I've already thought through in my head and tried to use on the globers with it, but it just, I don't know. Yeah, you sound a little worried about this one, Jeremy. Well, Jeremy, you were right to be afraid of this. Just a lot of. A lot of crazy shit. I think this one worries people because it does. It actually, there's a possibility to falsify one model or the other here. And it does destroy one of the models in question. Do you want to have a guess at which one is not looking good at the moment? Well, thanks for watching. Oh, and press all those good buttons and bells too, folks. Bye for now. I just don't yep. understand, and I've never been given a good example.